Hello there, today I'm very excited because I've come to Wayne, New Jersey to visit Vision Research, which is the company that makes the phantom cameras that I use all the time. Today, we are joined by Feroz and Tony. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Vision Research. Thank you very much, thanks for having me. I've known these guys for several years online, but it's always nice to see them in person. So we're gonna learn about phantoms, how they're made, where they're made. Let's do it. Sounds Come good, in. come in. This is my kind of table. It has all of my favorite toys on it. I've actually used, at some point or another, all of these cameras except for this one. Yeah, so this is our newest camera, and you know I'm happy that you get to see it, that you're visiting us today. Yeah. Uh, the VO640 model. Uh, it actually shoots 2,500 frames a second at 1080p HD. Yeah, we're really excited about this new camera. I can't wait till you get to use it. So it's similar in specs to the old Flex. The Flex 2K camera, yes, that you know and love. Um, love it. It's actually the same sensor as that camera. So it has, um, you know, the same image quality and, you know, it's in a smaller body. It has more memory, so you can actually record for longer. Um, it also takes, like, uh, CFast storage media, which is easier to get and less expensive than the, the city mics that, that you're used to working with. So, Gavin, before we can go into the production area, we do have to get you to put on some anti-static gear. This isn't quite the same as your lab coat. This one's a, <laughs> this one's an anti-static lab coat. How do I look? Smashing. Every camera starts life as a set of boards. The boards are built elsewhere, and then we populate them here at this facility. All of those gold positions you see are going to receive individual components, and they can be things like resistors or capacitors or different connectors. Every board has two corresponding masks built for it. These are stainless steel stencils with a pattern of holes that matches exactly the pattern of gold contact positions on the individual boards. These masks get put into the machine, the board is underneath the mask, and the head over here will squeeze solder paste right onto the board through the stencil which has cutouts for every single component's position. All the components start on either a roll or in a cassette and here you can see that hundreds or thousands of little components will get loaded into the pick and place machine to then be placed on those individual circuit boards. I've never seen a cassette without any uh video or music on it. It's first time for everything we have now. <laughs> so boards that come out with solder applied on them go into the pick and place machine and the pick and place machine like the name suggests takes components off the cassettes we saw earlier and places them onto the solder pads that are, are now wet and ready to receive components. Look at that. <laughs> The software will then look at the images that the high resolution camera creates to check that all the correct components are both in place, in the right orientation, and so on. Is this real time right now? Yeah. Oh, wow. Alright, Feroz, do you think you can find that on the board itself? I think eventually I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> So that should be right about here in this cluster where that component is missing right there. Some components are actually too big or not compatible with a pick and place machine and in those cases we hand solder some very particular components. In this case a large connector that's used in the cine flash is actually being soldered onto a specific board and you can see that it's been hand soldered. The technicians that we have do an incredible job of fine soldering. I'm useless at soldering. You and me both, I thought I could solder <laughs> if I saw these women do their jobs. So boards that come off the pick and place machine and that have passed the optical inspection then go into the oven. Now the oven is, like the name suggests, uh, a well-controlled temperature profiled oven. Boards go in one side and go through a very specific temperature profile and the profile really sets the solder. Big components and small components need different heat profiles and so we have a well-programmed set of temperatures that the board has to be exposed to during the process. Once the board comes out, every single piece of solder should have melted and then re-solidified without cracks or breaks or air bubbles. And if we do that right, we should get good reliability in the boards. Have you ever put toast on it? We 
haven't put toast through these ovens. So it would be a very expensive uh, set of toast. And they go through twice, is that right? Correct. So each board has a top side and a bottom side, and both sides are very densely packed with components. So the entire process is repeated twice. First on top, and then the board is flipped and goes through the entire process a second time. Here we have Phantom Vio boards. These are front connector boards. They actually have HDMI. The Phantom Vio is the first Phantom camera with HDMI built right into it. And you can see that that happens on the front board. There it is. People are often amazed at how many little components go into Phantom cameras. And this stock room has every component that makes up a final camera. We're talking about things like thousands of tiny little screws and hundreds of different types of screws. We're talking about things like the badges that make up the nameplates on the cameras. This is our new Phantom VO series of cameras. Their badges are fresh off the press. Seen that one before? Yeah. And that one? God, look at these small ones. You've even got components like tiny little grub screws that are then used to lock other components in place. Knobs. So there are knobs and buttons. These are the knobs and buttons used on the Phantom Flex camera and that series. The Phantom Flex 4K camera uses a new generation of membrane style buttons so all of the buttons are on one single membrane that helps us with things like durability and prevents ingress of water and dust as well I would say to date this is the most satisfying button that you've made this one? the, uh, the fleshy red button so the phantoms that I have were once just pieces in this room is that correct? correct Every Phantom that's ever been built has more or less been built out of this very facility. So every screw, every board, every sensor has had a life in this room at one stage. It might have been made up of tiny little components, small sub-assemblies, to the finished camera. Going from where we started at the board stage, how long does it take from that stage to a finished, fully assembled Phantom ready to ship? So once all the sub-assemblies are built, it depends a little bit on the camera model, but it can be anywhere from one hour to about four or five hours to assemble the components together to make a fully built Phantom camera. Beyond that though, there's many hours and sometimes days worth of testing that are required to make sure that the quality meets our standards. So we do two types of tests in this area. We have a collimated light source that helps us look for optical defects, things like scratches, spots, and problems with the cover glass of the sensor. And in the cover chamber, we have an integrating sphere which gives us a very uniform light source, which allows us to look for actual sensor defects, things like bad pixels and spots and so on. So every camera goes through a full temperature cycle. We specify our cameras from a certain minimum to maximum operating temperature and we test every single unit. So these machines allow us to vary the temperature over a certain profile and we can go from negative numbers to positive numbers in Celsius. Currently the camera's at 30 degrees Celsius. We run a full temperature profile from the minimum operating temperature to the maximum operating temperature. And while the camera is in the test chamber, we're also looking at the image that's coming out of that and a software program analyzes every pixel of every image to look for things like temperature related defects that might occur in the image. Do you prefer your Phantoms medium rare? We do like our Phantoms very rare. <laughs> After a camera is entirely built, we have a manual checklist, and that's the checklist you actually receive in the box with the camera. And that makes sure every screw is tightened to specification. It makes sure that the body has no scratches. We use torque wrenches for all the important bolts to make sure that they're at the right settings. And then we also do a visual inspection of all the parts to make sure there are no scratches or blemishes on the network to look at the image one final time. So this is a final checkout station. Feroz, I think it would be criminal if I came here and we didn't shoot something in high speed. So what have we got here? So what we've got set up for you today is probably one of the few shots that doesn't require safety gear. <laughs> yeah. It's very tame. We are using a special backlight with a circle cutout to get really nice 
clean lighting of a water droplet. And we're going to do a couple of different variations. We're first going to drop just clear water, look into, look at something really classic, the old splash. And after that, if we're feeling adventurous, we might do a couple with some red food dye in there to see some of the mixing that happens. So we'll shoot these at 1920 by 1080 at two and a half thousand frames per second. And we've turned the camera on its side just to optimize the resolution for the shot that we're going to do. So Gav, the drop is all set up to go. If you wouldn't mind doing the honors, love to. I will press here on the dropper. Are you ready? I am ready. And three, two, one. I'm going to load this guy up with red food dye. In three, two, one, go. One, go. Oh, that's spawning.